Have you ever been trying to navigate a Miro board and you accidentally move something that you didn't mean to move? It can be really frustrating and it's one of the most common problems I see when people are just trying to get around their boards quickly. In today's video, we're going to continue our series on understanding Miro by diving into navigation modes and also how to get around your boards quickly and efficiently. We'll learn why you accidentally move things sometimes and some tricks that will help you never encounter that problem again so you can really move around like a pro. So here's a simple board that I've set up that will help us really understand the key concepts of navigation and how to avoid some of the common pitfalls. The first thing that we need to discuss is something called navigation modes. You can get to navigation modes in two different ways. The first is to click the settings in the top right and then click navigation mode from the drop down menu. The other way that you can get to this is by right clicking anywhere on the canvas or inside of a blank area of a frame and selecting navigation mode from the drop down menu. When you do that, you'll be presented with this dialog box. This dialog box essentially controls some different ways that Miro will work with the mouse and keyboard. There's a mouse mode, a trackpad mode, and then there's also a third mode for a touchscreen if your device supports it. For this tutorial, I'm going to start in the mouse mode, and you'll need to also be on mouse mode if you want to follow along and get the same kind of interaction with your mouse and keyboard as what I'll be showing you here. We'll touch on trackpad a little bit later, but mouse mode should be the default for most desktop devices, so let's start there. Click apply, and now we're back in our board. Navigating your mural boards really comes down to mastering three very basic techniques. That is zooming, selecting, and panning. So let's talk a little bit how those work when you're in the mouse navigation mode. Let's start with zooming. So to zoom, all you need to do is use your mouse wheel. Scroll up on your mouse wheel to zoom in and scroll down on your mouse wheel to zoom out. You can also zoom using the keyboard by hitting the plus and minus keys to zoom in and out. And there's a nice shortcut of control one, which will zoom out to show you your entire mural board. The next thing is selecting. To select an item, you simply click on it with your mouse when we're in this selection mode. The other way is also to hold down the shift key, which allows you to drag out a lasso to select multiple items. I'll go through selection modes and some tips with selection in another video, but this is one of the basic things about getting around the board is selecting things as well. The third technique is panning, and we're gonna spend the most time talking about this because it really can help you navigate your boards efficiently, and knowing how to use it in different ways can help you avoid some of the common pitfalls that you'll see people make when they're trying to get around their boards quickly. So, the first thing to know is when you're in the mouse mode, the default way of panning is just to click anywhere in the canvas itself that's blank to move around like this, or you can also click anywhere in, a, in the blank area of a frame, like here, or over here. Now where you, when you're using this selection tool, you can also move things. So here we can see clicking the, the title of the frame moves it, clicking the border of this frame allows us to drag it around, and clicking one of these sticky notes over here allows us to also drag those around. Now what you may see or be frustrated by sometimes is if you're trying to very quickly slide across a board and then you accidentally move something that you didn't expect to move because you were just click drag, click drag, and you didn't click a blank spot, you actually clicked on an item. So this can be frustrating and there's definitely some better techniques that will help you avoid this and save yourself some frustration or some slowdowns when you're trying to navigate. So the first thing you need to know that you can get around this with is the selection tool, which is this default mouse cursor here in the toolbar. If you click this again, it actually changes to a panning tool. So this is a hand that you can click and drag, and it doesn't matter what you're on top of. So we can be right on top of one of these normal sticky notes, and we can drag around no problem, and this is easy to do. So you can do this with the, with the keyboard. You can use the V key to switch back and forth between the selector and the hand. It's a very convenient to do. You can also use the H key to switch specifically to the hand if you don't like the toggling mode. And if you may be editing a text box, let's say, 
you can, if you try to hit V or H inside the text box, you're obviously gonna get the letter and not the keyboard command. You can get out of that quickly via keyboard only just by hitting escape. And then you can go back to toggling your keyboard command. So that's one way is by toggling the selection tool over here into the pan tool. The other way that I use all the time, and this is just kind of my muscle memory default way for navigating the board, is by holding down the space bar. So if you press and hold space bar, you instantly get the grip hand and you can move around as much as you want. And as soon as you release the space bar, it turns right back into the selection tool. So I like this because it's pretty foolproof and it also is very easy just to have your thumb toggling on your keyboard while you're zipping around a board and you don't have to worry about hitting a specific key or accidentally clicking on something. It's, it's very intuitive to use it that way. So I would highly recommend just developing a habit of using the space bar to drag and move around your boards to really master panning and speed up how you get around. So here's an even better example of how this spacebar drag technique can really save you a lot of time and hassle. This is a process map that I've dropped in from the template section. Now this looks great, it's more stylized, it's got you know different stages and things, so very likely you might wanna use something nice like this in a workshop that you're doing. Now the problem here is that this is actually made up of both sticky notes and shape layers. So if I click out here in the blank canvas, you can see that I get the, the movement of the pan tool because I'm clicking on an empty space. But the empty space in this canvas here is not actually empty space, it's actually a shape. So if I'm trying to navigate around this canvas, it can become very difficult to get around without inadvertently kind of destroying the whole canvas as you go. So there are a couple of ways around this. One is to use our friend, the space bar, and drag, so now I can very easily drag around. This is even more pronounced if I'm zoomed in to where the shapes are filling the screen where there really wouldn't be a great way to get around without being able to quickly toggle between the tool. So here I can go in, edit some stuff, and I'm gonna hit escape to get back out of this mode, and then I can drag again and double click and make some more edits, and I can just kinda keep going. So this really allows you to quickly zip around some content without having to worry about destroying it by accidentally moving things. Now, the one thing I wanna point out is if you're building something for other people, you can actually get around this by locking down some of the background content. So if I'm, for instance, going to select uh, some of these stages, like stage three, stage four here, I could accidentally move those, right? Um, and so, what I actually wanna do here is to lock the content. So if I lock one of these shape layers, it will kind of just pass my click through it since it's locked and that allows me to kind of grab the canvas behind it, so to speak. And I get that same behavior of being able to click drag. So if you're preparing something for other people to use in a canvas, you might consider locking things so that the drag pan works for people that aren't familiar with using the, the space bar drag. So tips for you, but also tips for people that are using content in Miro that may not know these and could be frustrated by um, having content that moves around that they don't expect or could be destroying the canvas that you've built. So we've been working with our navigation mode set to mouse. Let's switch it to trackpad and talk briefly about some of the differences that you'll see. Right click anywhere on your canvas that's blank and select navigation mode. Select trackpad and click apply. Now we're in trackpad mode instead of mouse. So some of the differences that you'll immediately notice is instead of clicking and dragging an empty area to get the pan mode, now when you drag, you're gonna get the selection tool. So you get the, the lasso and you can select stuff. We also notice that the mouse wheel has changed so if we go up and down with the mouse, we're now scrolling up and down vertically. If we hold down shift and scroll, we can go left to right. This is different than in the mouse mode where we were zooming on a mouse wheel. Now they get the same functionality here for the zoom in trackpad mode, hold down the control or command key and that allows you to get the same zooming functionality. So this is very important because being able to zoom quickly is just as important as being able to 
pan efficiently and it was very intuitive in the mouse mode and you need the extra key modifier with the control or the command key to be able to zoom when you're on trackpad mode. So the other thing to notice is that our hold down the space bar to get the pan tool still works. This is consistent across both mouse and trackpad mode and our keyboard shortcuts for toggling the selection tool with either V or switching directly to the, to the hand tool with the H also works in the trackpad mode. So those are the really the only things that you need to know is that pan mode it now, it now is exclusively through either the selection tool toggle or through your spacebar hold and drag. And the select mode is now a little bit more prominent. If you have a touchscreen device, you can tap and long hold to be able to get the selection tool. Otherwise, it works fairly similar to how it would work in the mouse or trackpad mode with how you would navigate with gestures on a mobile device or a touch device. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you've taken away some tips that will help you quickly and confidently navigate your boards. And if you're interested in learning more about Miro, check out the other videos in this series on understanding Miro. There's gonna be lots more content like this in the future, so don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell so you're notified when more videos in this series come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.